Hey everybody and welcome to another ActionFeatures.net Toy Talk Review. Today we're taking a look at another of the Diamond Select Ghostbusters releases. This time we're taking a look at the special release from Series 7, the Phantom Terror Dog. Now Series 7 that included the diorama pieces that is at comic shops and specialty shops had Werbach, Egon, Slimeblower Winston, and Janosch. But when the wave was going to Toys R Us, they didn't think Janosch would sell as well there, so they created this Phantom Terror Dog. Now, Toys R Us has gone out of business in the United States. Um, so this has found new homes, which we'll talk about more when we get to the couch portion. But, so it's a bit confusing as there are basically four figures for Series 7 now. We're back, Egon, Slimeblower Winston, Janosch, Phantom Terror Dog. There will not be a Phantom Terror Dog release that comes with the firehouse wall piece. It is only like this in the smaller packaging. Speaking of the packaging, it is the same as the other Toys R Us releases where it's just a card back, no panel along the side, no book style packaging, no diorama piece tucked behind, none of that. And this one actually does have this Toys R Us exclusive sticker on the front, even though it is not any longer a Toys R Us exclusive. It's found by other retailers. Uh, we've got the Ghostbusters 2 logo down below, which is kind of odd because this was not from Ghostbusters 2. It is in the Ghostbusters 2 waves, though, so I guess to keep the consistency, they kept Ghostbusters 2 down here. On the back of the package, we get a look at the other two figures that are in the slim style Ghostbusters Series 7 packages. That's, of course, Line Blair Winston, we're back Egon, and then a bit of a write-up about the Phantom Terror Dog, which I will read very quickly for you. Having been banished from this dimension by Tiamat, Gozer the Traveler journeying from world to world with his two servants, Zul the Gatekeeper and Vince Clortho the Keymaster. When a cult of Gozerians resurfaced in the early 20th century in New York City, they included statues of Gozer's servants as terror dogs in the plans for their rooftop temple. And those were the forms Zul and Vince Clortho took when they breached our dimension. Pursuing and possessing humans who lived near the temple, Zul and Vince Clortho returned to their terror dog forms once the portal to Gozer Dimension had been opened. This seven inch scale action figure is based on the 1984 feature film Ghostbusters and features interchangeable horns, sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. Alright, so that's him all packaged up. Let's take him out of there and take a look at him loose. Alright, so here's the Phantom Terror Dog out of the box. Uh, let's take a look at the regular Terror Dog next to it first so you can kind of see the difference in the color before we move any further. Um, so it's, it's kind of tough to pick it up in the camera, but you can see the translucency. You can see my red background through the body. It's the same sculpt, but this time it's been molded in this smoky, gray, translucent pl plastic, which we'll talk a little bit more about when we get to the couch portion as to why they did that. Um, there are no real paint apps on him other than the red metallic eyes. Uh, I guess that's because of the translucency. Any kind of places where you put paint, you wouldn't be able to see through it. So in order to maintain that translucency, um, the nails aren't painted, the horns aren't painted, none of that stuff's painted. The interior of the mouth, the teeth, none of that. The only paint spots are these red metallic eyes, which are different than the first release. These are just more of a regular, like, blood red, and these are a metallic red on this one. Um, so there's not going to be much new here if you've seen the original Terror Dog. It's the same sculpt, the same articulation, but this time you're just getting that translucent gimmick going. Which is pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's neat to be able to see through a figure. I like clear figures. I think they're neat. Um, he does include the switch out horns, as I was describing before. These are kind of tough to pull out, though. Well, I, I was wrong. That pulled out super easy that time. When I first pulled them out, they were really hard to get them out of that uh, recess. Um, and it looks like they are ha they do have unique pegs, so you got to make sure you get the right one to plug into the right side of the head uh, to make sure that the, the horn goes in there all the way. So now he's got mismatched horns. So you can make it either Vince Clortho or Zool depending on which one you want, or you can buy more than one and just put the extra horns in a plastic baggie, I guess, or something? I don't know. Uh, let's talk about articulation real quick, because there's not a lot to talk about on the figure itself, um, because like I said, there's not that many paint apps. He has what feels like rocker ankles on his front paws, and then those hinge up and down. And then we've got a swivel where the lower leg i guess it's all legs i'm going to call these arms but they're not they're legs so they swivel where they insert they hinge and there's a ratcheting inside there uh, same on the shoulders where they plug into the where the arm plugs into the shoulder it rotates and then it also hinges and has that same ratcheting stuff going on same articulation on this arm uh, the neck has multiple points so it can swivel up and down left to right and then i think that yeah the ball the head is on a ball joint he's got a hinged jaw and then we move back to these back legs. And now when these are in the package, if I remember right, let me take a look. Yeah, these pieces, this lower leg piece, make sure I'm looking at this right. Well, maybe I'm wrong. 
Sorry, I was trying to remember how they... That's what it was. Okay. So, when you get them in the package, this piece here is swiveled around. But I think it's supposed to be like I have it here. So, the feet are right, and those have a slight... I don't really feel like they pivot. It's more like they just ratchet back and forth. I don't really feel too much of a pivot. If it is, it's very little. Um, and then we've got this leg portion, which is fine, and that plugs in, so you get a swivel where it plugs, and then a hinge that also ratchets. ratchets. So then this third piece up, this is actually backwards inside the package. So I swiveled mine around so that you get this extra piece on the back here, because I think it has more of a dog stance when it's like that. So that has a joint where it plugs in here, it swivels, and then you have a hinge that's ratcheting. All these joints are really tight, which is good. Um, and then we've got the same thing where it inserts into the pelvis area, I guess, where it swivels and then it hinges in and out. And all those joints have that ratcheting uh, mechanism inside there, so he can really hold his pose as well. But it sometimes is a little difficult to get him at a point where he's looking really natural with all four feet on the ground. Well, him or her, since it could be Zul or Vince Clortho. Uh, overall, though, the, the articulation does work well. Um, there's also, I don't know if I mentioned it, yeah, there's a mid-torso swivel as well. I guess I didn't mention that one. But all the articulation does work really well. I don't feel any joints that are super stuck or that felt like they were going to break when I was moving him. Um, you can get some nice posing out of him, some like leaping poses and stuff like that. Even though there wasn't a ton of movement in the movie other than the stop motion version, there was some movement in that, uh, you still can get some really cool poses. That maybe not the most movie accurate poses, but some cool looks to him. Um, let's take a look at him next to the other Terror Dogs real quick here. So there we have the NECA one, or the Diamond Select first release that we've already looked at a second ago. I'm gonna, yeah, it's close enough. And then here is the original NECA Terror Dog. So the sizes are about the same in all three of them. This is obviously more of a novelty, um, whereas these are the more accurate looks to the Terror Dogs. Uh, but it is cool to see a bunch of different Terror Dogs lined up. Hey, it almost looks like, when I'm looking at my viewfinder, like sizing going up. Um, yeah, so that's about it that I can tell you about the figure itself. The cover articulation, there's not much paint. The sculpt is really nice. Um, but we'll talk more about it when we get over to the couch. Let's go over there. Hey everybody, and welcome to another ActionFeatures.net Toy Talk Review. As you saw in the opening sequence, today we're taking a look at the Ghostbusters... It says Ghostbusters 2 on here, but not really Ghostbusters 2. Ghostbusters Series 7 Phantom Terror Dog. Now, um, I didn't... I, I tried to keep away from talking about too much of this stuff in the opening sequence, but... This final wave of the Slim... Well, it might not be the final wave. They may have found another home for them. So these Slim Package Ghostbusters figures, without all the diorama parts, were Toys R Us exclusive. Um, obviously, Toys R Us is going under, at least here in the States. It's going to continue on in Canada, it sounds like. Um, and there was a big, uh, big question mark when it came to Series 7 and what was going to happen. Because Series 6 hit there, which was Lewis, uh, Werbach, Ray and Vigo, but Series 7, which has already been out of comic shops for a while, the whole Toys R Us troubles started right around then. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Diamond Select was saying, well, we really don't know what we're going to do just yet. Hopefully we'll be able to find a home for them, but there's no telling yet. And for the most part, I wasn't that upset, because so far all of the sets of Ghostbusters at Toys R Us have been just re-releases of the other one without the parts. Mm -hmm. But this wave was different than the other waves in that there was this terror dog, the Phantom Terror Dog, which was shown at one of the shows, I think maybe at San Diego Con, and it was a terror dog mold, but done in like a translucent plastic. And so instead of Janos from this wave, they didn't think Janos would sell a Toys R Us, so they decided to do a terror dog, because the terror dog had sold great yeah. so far. Um, so when this it was announced that they didn't know what was going to happen with this wave, I was kind of bummed, because I was like, well, I kind of want that terror dog. And it had to be in production already, because Series 7 was already in production. So what was going to happen to it? Well, just the other night on eBay, like, seriously, a week ago, I was just looking for Ghostbusters stuff on eBay, and somebody had the Phantom Terror Dog on there. And I was like, it's out. How did that happen? Like, there was no announcement or anything. And, but the guy wanted 50 bucks a piece, and he had sold a couple already. And I'm like, man, that stinks. I don't want to pay 50 bucks just for that Phantom Terror yeah. Dog. So I did a little more research online, and I found that Big Bad Toy Store had the whole, the whole set. They had the Egon... The slime blower Winston and the Terror Dog for fifty bucks. Now I didn't really need the slime blower Winston or the Egon, but I'd rather pay fifty bucks and get three figures and figure out something to do with those. Cost fifty bucks for three? Yeah. 
rather than just 50 bucks for one. That's great. Yeah, which is much, much better. Um, that's more in line with what they should be, 15 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. So, is that going to be the new home for those, the Big Bad Toy Store website? No, that, Big Bad's not the only one that had them. No, oh. but the, that guy had them, too. So, oh, okay. I think different online retailers were offered them. I don't know for sure how many were, but definitely some have them, because I think Toy Wiz has the Phantom Terror Dog at 40 bucks. Um, this guy online, whatever the eBay guy username was, he had them for 50 bucks. Another eBay guy had them for 50 bucks. But Big Bad had the actual sets for, for 50 bucks, mm -hmm. And that's a much better value. I mean, at, at Toys R Us, they were 15 bucks a piece. So that's 45 bucks. Yes, yeah, so you're only three. paying five more dollars. And they have $4 flat rate shipping. So it was four, $54 shipped for it's all three of them. It's not. And, you know, I was, I was talking before in another video about doing the tan suit Ghostbusters, like getting extra slime blower ones and doing them in the tan suits with mm -hmm. the, the Ghostbusters symbols. So those extras, Winston's, I'll at least get a use out of. And I'll probably do a giveaway at some point for the Egon, the extra Egons I'm going to have. Because I already ordered two sets, one to get a sealed terror dog and one to have one to open because I have a sealed set of all the diamond stuff so far. Um, and as you know, I got this. And then I went online and I got another set because I wanted to have both of the horns. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the Phantom Terror Dog. You've already seen all the articulation and the comparisons and stuff in that opening sequence. And now it's just kind of our thoughts about the figure. I like the Diamond Select Terror Dog. I think it's cool. This is a regular one. Mm -hmm. and this is the Phantom one. Um, I like this mold. I, I like the articulation on it. I think that the mold on the NECA one, a little closer to the movie, mm -hmm. but I do like all the articulation and stuff. Yeah, the jaw. And yeah, I like the jaw. I like the fact that you only have to buy one and you can switch out the horns to whichever one you want. Um, I think the articulation is nice. The paintwork is nice. And maybe even the, like, the interior of the mouth I might like a little bit better. Like the head sculpt overall I might like better. But the body sculpt, I think, goes to NECA. Just because it doesn't have much articulation, yeah. so they can do whatever. So, But that's just talking about the regular Terror Dog. Let's talk about the Phantom version. And the Phantom version does come with both sets of horns, just like the first release does. So you can do either Zool or Vince Clortho. Um, and all the articulation is the same, but now it's been molded in this slightly clearish, translucent, translucent, dark, dark gray plastic. And the only paintwork I see are the eyes, which they've given this like red metallic paint to. I kind of don't understand the Phantom Terror Dog. Yeah. It's like a ghost terror dog. I guess, yeah. It's it, it's like the name implies, like a ghost terror dog. It kind of reminds me just like of the scene where it crashes through the door at Luce's party, just because I like the green outline to it, but even that doesn't make too much sense. See, that I know where you're going, and that's kind of one of the thoughts I had about this, this whole thing. You can go two ways with this, as to explain the Phantom Terror Dog. They also did one of these for Mini Mates, like a clear oh. sculpt. Um... There's two ways you can go about thinking it, in my opinion. It's either when uh, Dana and Lewis are being transformed into the Terror Dogs, mm -hmm. and there's all that energy going on, right? Yeah. Or you could treat it like a special effect, because when the, you do rotoscoping in movies back then, where they took an element where they filmed like a miniature, and then they had to optically composite it into a scene, there's a bit of, of translucency to that. You can kind of see the background through what's been optically composited, because the way to eliminate the black matte lines is to make them not quite, not to print them at their full opacity. Mm -hmm. So that you make them slightly clear to get rid of some of that black outline, which that may be what they were going with here. To get like that, do sort of an in-joke as to the stop motion of the compositing. Yeah. So you go either way with it. I kind of like that idea that it would be maybe a little play on the fact that they were a little bit translucent in those scenes from the special effect, or, you know, you could just say it's where they're phasing into that, and it's a phantom, or it's kind of, you know, changing. Mm -hmm. um, either way, it is a cool idea for an exclusive. Yeah, it is. I like yeah, it. It's cool. kind of cool looking. Yeah, I love the metallic red eyes. I think that's really neat looking. Um, it's not 100% something you have to have. No, that's kind of why they did it as the Toys R Us one, though. Like, yeah. Like, just something you need. And this one doesn't come with a part, so they're not forcing you to buy it. Yeah, and I, I agree with what they were thinking back then, in that Yanosh probably wouldn't have sold that well at Toys R Us. Mm -hmm. Janine didn't sell that well at Toys R Us. Even the Ghostbuster Lewis, I see a lot of. Yeah, um, but the regular Lewis, there was a lot of him yeah. back in the day. Uh, so I don't think Yanosh would have done as well at Toys R Us as something like this would have. Because if you go in there and you just like Ghostbusters, and you're not buying this whole line... And you see this, and you're like, oh, a Terror Dog, that's cool. You don't even care that it's a Phantom right, Terror yeah. Dog. If you're just a... And that's what more of the Toys R Us stuff was for the casual fan. Mm -hmm. Just somebody that walks in and sees Ghostbusters and goes, oh, I'll take that. Yeah, and if you miss out on the first Terror Dog, that's not that bad. Yeah, it's not a bad alternative. 
to the other terror dog. Um, so I think that's what they were going with here. It's just a way to get this mold back out again. It's a cool idea. It's um, a recognizable ghost from the films. Mm -hmm. It's something that didn't really cost them anything to add in because the mold's already there. Not much paint work. Um, it's a great idea as a sub in for something else and as an exclusive. But definitely not something you have to have yeah. to feel like you've got a complete Ghostbusters line. And definitely not worth 50 bucks all on its own. No. No. It's worth 50 bucks for the way of a three, but not 50 bucks all yeah. on its own. Um, what is your thoughts on it? I think it's cool. It's a cool release, you think? Yeah. <laughs> you never have much to say other than just, I think it's cool. Yeah. Huh, I think it's cool. I think it's cool, all right. Uh, what do you think about this mold as compared to like the other Terror Dog molds? Do you think it's cool? Yeah, do you weigh articulation cool. over sculpt? Do you like more, like more joints or do you like, I like a better sculpt? You like articulation? So you probably prefer their Terror Dogs to NECA's. I like these ones. Yeah. Like these ones here? Mm -hmm. As opposed to the NECA ones? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those don't really move well, much I, at all. I like both though. I, I like take both into it. Like which, both of these guys or? Like the articulation and joints. Well, the articulation is joints. It's the same deal. Oh, well, I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'll tell you, I like them both. I like articulation so much, I'm going to mention it twice. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the neck ones are cool because they have the light-up feature, and they got a really good sculpt. But yeah, if you're more into articulation, this terror dog is superior. Yeah. Um, and, but if you're going to only get it one terror dog from Diamond, get the original release, and don't fork over the money to buy a set. Unless, of course, you want, if you were collecting the slim packaging ones to begin with, mm -hmm. you might as well get the other set of three because it's only 50 bucks yeah and if you went and bought the deluxe ones to get those then you're gonna be spending 25 bucks a piece plus you're getting two ghostbusters in this way too yeah you're getting two ghostbusters um then you only have one more wave to buy and you'd have to i don't know if they're going to keep the slim line going they probably won't um i don't know if they'd be able to find another home to buy all, buy all those sets uh so if you were buying the slim ones before might as well get this pack of three and then you'll have to buy the the diorama ones next time around but um, then you're stuck not getting Yanners too. Yeah. It's a tough call. It's a tough call. But this is definitely not something you have to buy. Yeah, I opinion. hope they use the mold again for like the blue one from the cartoon. Yeah. I, I hope so too, man. I think that would be a great exclusive to do them and like a, a more of a real Ghostbusters. I don't know what the real Ghostbusters packaging is going to look like. I'm hoping it's not just green like all the other yeah. releases. I kind of feel like it's going to be, but it's, I have a feeling it's going to be too. But it'd be nice if it was blue. Yeah. I don't know. I think of blue the with the cartoon, like, like the, the blue is purple. purple. Yeah. yeah. Like a blue or a purple, that would be really neat if they did that with those last two waves. And if they did the blue terror dog from the cartoon, do him in a blue it, packaging. It'd be cool if they had slim packaging ones and they like had classic artwork on like camera. Oh, that would be really neat. Yeah. I don't think they're going to go that far with it, but that would be really neat. I feel like the blue one would make more sense from the Phantom because it's been seen, actually. Yeah, uh, totally. I, I completely agree with you. I think that that would have made more sense to do as an exclusive. That's what you're saying, right? To do the blue one instead of this one. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. saying. It'd make a lot more sense. It would make a lot more sense than... But I think at this point that they were planning this, maybe they weren't sure about how the cartoon stuff was going to go. Yeah. Um, I think everyone likes the cartoon stuff. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. I think everybody's excited about the cartoon stuff. I don't know if that would have been the best first thing to release as a cartoon. That's game. true. Yeah. That's very true. Um, they probably should have. They probably wanted to wait until they got some more cartoon stuff out. But this way, it's a it's a nice in between. Mm -hmm. You know, we got this one, and then maybe later on down the line they'll get the blue one out, and that way they're not so close together in releases anyway. You know, space them out a little bit between the different terror dogs. Um, but yeah, I would totally be down for a blue one from the cartoon. I think that would be awesome. And it's a great way to get that mold mm -hmm. used, oh, used again. Overall, this line is doing great. Like, yeah, they have a good it's killer. Of characters. So I love like, it. I, they, dioramas. Yeah, and then they just showed they just showed the fully geared up. Winston and, and Egon from the cartoon yeah, with actually proton slime. packs mm -hmm. on. Uh, so I feel like we're getting really close to the solicitations on those. We'll be able to do yeah. the order soon. Those and they did cool. say they're going to be out by the end of the year. That that first set will be. Um, I don't know if the second set's going to be or not, mm -hmm. but that first set will be. Uh, okay, so if you want to check out the gallery, it'll be linked in the info section below this video if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, if you like our videos, make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you hit notify. Right? Um, I don't know what we'll do next. We're kind of jumping around with this this Ghostbuster line mm -hmm. between releases and everything. Uh, I would like to go back and get some of the the first series done, but I will probably try and stick to the newest waves and then catch up on those other ones for these full reviews. It'd be kind of cool if we like after the whole Ghostbuster two stuff is done, if we set the firehouse on like a table and did a review of that. Oh yeah, yeah. We should do the whole diorama of that one too, mm -hmm. like the the temple diorama. Because now that I've got the temple diorama built, 
I can't really review the pieces with the figures. Yeah. The most I can do is show them in the package. Um, but we can do a full Temple Dio review once once we finish up all these other reviews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But hey, we we put up a couple reviews lately. Yeah, yeah we've, we've, we've been, been doing better. better. You know, yeah. doing some random videos here and there, and then getting some videos up just to keep some more content on here. Yep. All right, cool. We're gonna sign off on this one, right? Mm -hmm. You got anything else to say? No. All right, we're signing off on this one. See you guys next time. Bye.